Good morning, everybody. My name is Julia Peyton Jones, and welcome to Tea with Julia. Today, my guest is Nikki Wilson, who was born in Edinburgh in 1967. She studied at Camberwell College of Art, receiving a BA Ons in Sculpture. Whilst at Camberwell, she spent a year at Nova Scotia College of Art and Design and attended a programme to develop her practice in New York. Returning to the UK, she completed her MA in Sculpture at Chelsea School of Art and went on to be awarded a British School at Rome scholarship. After a year training in advertising, hi Nikki! Hi. After a year training in advertising, marketing and PR, Nikki worked at LSDC Air and then at the renowned WCRS Creative Agency, where she led a campaign to launch Orange Telecommunications. Throughout, she continued her sculptural practice, showing at Corner House Manchester, Icon Gallery Birmingham, Royal Festival Hall London, and in the group show England's Glory at Whiteley Court alongside Helen Chadwick. In 2008, she became founder and director of Jupiter Artland. Now, I want to go on. Firstly, hi, Nikki. How are Hello. you? Thank you so much for joining me today. It's really terrific. And also, since Scotland is one of my most favorite places in the world, and Jupiter Artland, therefore, um, so very nice to have this connect connection with Scotland. Um, I have another bit of a CV, which is actually about Jupiter Artland. And quite apart from my questions, which I hope will tell everybody everything they want to know, because you will answer them so fully, I wondered whether it would be helpful if we just quickly ran through the bare bones of, of um, Jupiter Artland. So people who aren't familiar with your work really know kind of, so to speak, the lay of the land. So you bought the house, Bonington House, a Jacobean manor house with a hundred acre estate in 1999. Then um, gradually realized that this should be a sculpture park because of your influence um, and great admiration uh, of Ian Hamilton Finley's garden, Little Sparta, some 30 miles from Bonington as the crow flies. Jupiter Artland visitors are given a map indicating the, uh, the location of artworks, uh, but there's no set route. All the sculptures uh, in the permanent collection were created in response to the landscape, the design and location chosen by the artist, which removes the question already. Um, and Bonington House itself is also open to the public and hosts displays of contemporary art. Brilliantly, Jupiter Artland was a finalist for Museum of the Year in 2016, which is an incredible achievement and recognition mm -hmm. of what you've achieved and huge congratulations. So it must have been wonderful opening to the public again after lockdown. And was it difficult, that process? And are your visitors relishing being with art again? Well, um, actually, first of all, can you hear me okay, by the yes. way? Yes, um, yeah, absolutely. I, Thank I, you. I, um, first of all, um, we're not open to the public quite yet. We have oh. sort of de designated ourselves alongside um, uh, social uh, exercise because we're two weeks behind England so Scotland mm -hmm. is definitely behind in the Covid curve uh, so we are open to members and then we open to the public I think next week so it's going to be that's going to be very exciting um, in terms of actually opening up and being able to um, so share the landscape again we had all had a rest hibernated and um, I think uh, probably uh, just had time to reflect and ruminate. And then suddenly all these um, members arrived and they are thrilled. The place has a slightly wild, hairy feel to it because, <laughs> of course, the landscape, we, 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 it was me and Robert looking after the landscape with a couple of gardeners <laughs> that live on site. So, I mean, you know, we, we were really, I mean, we've been literally cutting the grass and doing this it's been very it's been very good for us lots uh, hopefully a bit of weight and a, a little bit swarthy in our towns but um we are uh you know it, it, the pleasure from our public has been palpable i mean they're so relieved to be able to get out of their homes have legitimate exercise see art and nature and it has a healing uh, quality i mean the people that come are just overwhelmed actually it's mm. really lovely to experience and they're very keen to share that um so uh, I think we're, we're finally open. It's such a relief. And, you know, I'm looking forward to a summer where we could sort of almost salvage some of the programme that we had planned, which, you know, we know everybody is doing. So it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but we're there, nearly. Well, congratulations. I mean, that, that, that thing of coming out of hibernation 
I went back to work in the gallery. I've worked throughout um, lockdown, but went back to the gallery earlier this week for the Basel um, viewing rooms. We've got a wonderful exhibition there. But it's really a moment when you step outside the door and you say, right, this is, we're back to real life now. And because okay. although the lockdown has been very, very traumatic for many people and uh, hugely distressing, there has also been, for me personally, at least a moment of introspection and which has been unbelievably helpful and, and a sort of time out, so to speak, um, that yeah. wouldn't have happened. I can't I, think of any other I, way. I, 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 would, I wouldn't really put a lot of store by any of the deep thoughts I had through lockdown. <laughs> it seemed to mainly revolve around food and, and cutting grass and, and, and my children. So, you know, the, uh, you're right. There's huge personal cost and, um, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of tragedy, but also there were all these micro little disasters mm -hmm. of A levels going a bit tits yes, up and, you know, degrees. And so out of all of our children, there are five of them, three of them were hitting that wall. Of, of, uh, so it's been a, a, it's been a ra rather remarkable, never to be repeated probably phase of our lives right. where the, the, we have had the pleasure of a sculpture park that's been deserted surrounding our family home, which has been very good for us to reconnect with why we did this and to sort of fall in love with the work again and it yes. not be work you know the sculpture really and the landscape were speaking to us now i want to take you back to the time when you were an artist you trained as an artist you were an exhibiting artist you also worked in the commercial sector in advertising how difficult was it to leave the studio and the office uh to move to scotland and what did you take with you when you made that transition Oh, well, I mean, I, I think I found uh, an invitation to a party when we left London and the title of it was Leaving Lovely London. And in there gives it all away. I sort of wept for about two mm. years when I got back <laughs> home. You know, it was, um, it, 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 I, I absolutely loathed every single minute of being here. And I just seemed to be popping babies out left, right and centre. And that, well, all that creative energy that goes into running a business or, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, creating creative uh, output of the studio work just disappeared in creating children and um, I, and I just got into a bit of a sort of, sort of space where that was all that was happening so uh, one day I was very lucky I, I in the days of the yellow pages I'd um, thought about you you know I, I you know I know the places that make me happy little Sparta the Abrero the Hermitage and uh, a CC, you know, these places that have magic gardens and absolute exquisiteness. And I can see that this landscape has this potential. And I, pick, uh, you know, I picked up the phone and Charles Jenks answered the phone. It was all those days when people actually answered their phones. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'll come around and see you. And, you know, from there, um, the creativity came back. But at one point it was very... And now I'm I'm fulfilled because this is a creative endeavor, and you know I'm dealing with artists or you know getting to know them, their wonderful relationships with them that are very satisfying. Although I do have a call to the studio, that is what has happened over lockdown. Oh, but that's I want wonderful. To go that's back wonderful. to making, but I keep saying that, and then I don't do it. So I don't know. You know, I need a real kick up the bum by somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, maybe your family will propel you. It's, it, maybe yeah, I mean, it could be. An, <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, going back to the studio is another uh, form of enforced lockdown well, in it. a way. Yeah. Yes, indeed, I have. And um, but it's so much about discipline, and also yeah. it's so much easier not to do it than to do it. And that's the thing. It's like you know, taking exercise or any of those things, which are very good for us. Um, and I'm hopeless that. <laughs> well, you know, I. I if you, can, if you can open and run a sculpture park, there is no question that you have the discipline and the will to go back to the studio. Absolutely mm. not. So Thank would you. You, so you definitely see yourself returning as a sculpture, as an artist, for a, an, a writer or a composer, for example? Yes, it, I think that, that, that is what fulfills me. I mean, I, I suppose the reason why I've enjoyed Jupiter so much is that I see it as a sort of living... Um, installation of work that is you know being curated by myself and Robert my husband but actually mm. you know I mean I can't help but get right into the detail of how we're going to fix this mounting I mean I'm a classic sculptor I love you know the challenge of finding sort of all sorts of strange pieces of equipment and then putting you know, working out how we can put them together helping the artist so 
I think that I'm probably uh, ready to do that. It's just when, and you know, this, there will be a moment. You know, it, there will be a clarion call. I know it will, but you just yes, have to wait for it. <laughs> Well, I shall send you a text from time to time saying, how are you getting on in the studio? And somehow it's so <laughs> awful having to say, well, I'm not there yet. But hopefully, I'm sure many people will be encouraging you. Well, so, my, most, of my, most of my work required taking clothes off. So I, I think I've got to get over that. <laughs> Maybe enjoy a bit of exercise. Well, I'm not so sure. You know, never say nothing is impossible. Uh, <laughs> but you work and you've talked very much about how you work with artists at um, Jupiter. And... Um, all the artworks are commissioned. Um, I was reading about Anthony Gormley's. I think I may have um, misunderstood that. Did that come from White Cube, or is that the only one that's different from yes, all the are, others? No, there, there are, annoyingly, a couple that were actually seen in situ in other places. And uh, as a principal, I really don't like doing that at all. But as it's turned out, that if, whenever we have engaged with the work that exists elsewhere, the, the nice thing has been that the artists has immediately come. We've always yes. invited them to stay and they immediately get involved in the fact we have miniature donkeys. The landscape is, is where it is. It's such an unexpected landscape for this part of Scotland because we're in an unfashionable part of Scotland. It's not the Highlands. It's not beautiful. It's, it's got low-key industrial goop everywhere. And it's kind of, you know, you can see beautiful holes in the distance, but that's not where we are. We're chicken sheds and mining. And yeah. so um, it's, uh, he, he, they all come and respond, and that's exactly what Anthony did. He came to stay with the idea of placing the sculpture just there um, and then very quickly reworked it. So, it, and that happened with the Anish Kapoor as well. That it, it, you know, the moment an artist engages with the space, that language takes over, that language starts to push them, and you always end up in this exciting journey. Um, and in yes. fact, his, you know, it was just very easy in the end. Yeah. But, it, but I mean, but also the work becomes something else because yeah. the Gormley was um, in a confined space in London in a, in a gallery. And here it is, this wonderful piece. Well, we'll have a picture of it um, shortly. Here it is with you and uh, this on set. So you come, you approach it as you come up a small incline if from memory and you see it in profile, you know, on, on the horizon. It's spectacular. And a niche is, from memory, you, you come across it in the most interesting way. And, you know, it's, it, it's an incredible privilege looking at work, works of art in unexpected uh, situations. And partly the glorious landscape that you have, which I understand that it, um, it's, this, it's not the Highlands, but nevertheless, Scotland is so wonderfully beautiful wherever you go, in my view. Um, you know, you, you, you can't fall back on sort of habitual ways of seeing art. You, you come to things afresh because the landscape itself, not only does it change, but it is fresh. So, mm. um, and Jupiter Artland, I think, is it's the only public sculpture park in Scotland. And it's also one of the very few um, sculpture parks in England. I'm thinking of the Sainsbury Centre, uh, which is in East Anglia in Norfolk, yeah. the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, of course. Yeah. Um, if, you took, if you think of something possibly on a slightly smaller scale, it would be the New Arts Centre and Roche Court in Salisbury. Gorgeous. But also, beautiful. Gorgeous. Wonderful. But also in her team, which I suppose is the great... A beacon for all um, sculpture uh, in Brazil, uh, in, which was started by Bernardo Paz, which has even more land than you. I mean, my goodness me. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, let's, see some, let's see some images so that we can actually talk about the work, because having mentioned Anthony, um, Anthony's work now, we can, we've got some... Um, here we go. Let's start, let's start with... Oop, there we go. So this is my memory of it, um, of this absolutely extraordinary work. So it's a figure. Tell us more. I think it's, it's, it's 1,119 steel balls held by 1,770 steel elements, just for practical reasons. But tell us more. It's a star map that's been um, uh, twisted and shaped in the form of Anthony. So he's using his form. The beautiful thing about this, and I isn't quite captured in this photograph because it's in profile, 
is that you see through it and to the landscape beyond. And the landscape beyond has everything, you know, it is it has got post-industrial units, it's got chicken farms, it has the three bridges, it's got the Ockle Hills in the background. It is absolutely beautiful in an extraordinary way. And this, um, when I say absolutely beautiful, I mean, it, and the word extraordinary is that it's, it's got a, a tension to it. And this work definitely uh, is relating to that enormous landscape beyond. Um, but of course, it's about, a, you know, it, it really is a looking up at the skies, the, the, the human form kneeling almost in grace at the wonderment of a larger unknown void space. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful piece by Anthony. And I um, mean, he, 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 it was installed one way, he came and installed it the other way. It, he's changed it. We built the elevation so that you do get this framing of the landscape and that it doesn't have trees behind it. Um, you know, all these things happened, but uh, it is one of the pieces that in the Lo Learning Foundation, I mean, you know, the children just, are you know immediately or you know understanding a work of art in a scale that looks like a climbing frame but isn't mm. it's a it's a, a it's a very successful work okay. yeah. and i think i i think it also speaks to the possibilities of the human spirit that mm. that relationship of oneself to something so epic and grand in this in this wonderful setting it's um, humble yes and i i I think particularly now we need to be reminded of that. But let's go on and look at some other great works because, of course, the Charles Jenks, which is, um, here we go, yes, which is an, another um, evening picture, if I can put it yes. like this. I think it took you eight years to realise. I mean, Charles lived um, in Scotland. He was, I mean, mm. in Scotland, neighbours can be you know, an hour and a half apart. So broadly, you might say that he was a neighbour. He was a, a great artist. His, his London house is now uh, grade one listed, which is so incredibly impressive, great. and rightly so. Um, but you knew him, and also he very, very committed to architecture, the Maggie Centres, uh, also um, a number in Scotland. Um, a great academic, a great thinker, um, mm. a great writer, but also these extraordinary um, sculptural pieces. Tell us more, and why eight years? Well, eight years because Charles worked <laughs> on a bit of A4 with plasticine <laughs> models this size. And then he handed it and said, build that. And we went, and you know, it, it really is the most precious model we have, which is that that sculpture is five acres, but it came from an A4 piece of paper. No draw, well, there were a few drawings of details, I mean, but not to scale. I mean, it was just a lovely, beautiful drawing that Charles had done. But I mean, there were hilarious photographs of us with a digger standing with each other, <laughs> and digger pointing and sort of going a bit higher here and smooth yeah. this out. And it was like a, it's a giant pregnancy of, you know, where this, this piece evolved and he just said, you know, I want people to drive through it. This is, I mean, he helped us. He mentored me really right at the beginning. He said, this is an art land. It's not a sculpture park. Mm. It's an art land. This is honoring art the whole point yeah. is that this will the land comes first and foremost this is where you know the, the artists respond to this it doesn't go the other way around and he's absolutely right and he i mean it's so sad that uh, at his passing but because it is a great loss in great yes. thinking however he has left work everywhere and it's all enormous and wonderful and it is experienced physically and this is one of these pieces that you have to really walk and understand it um, to, you know, to feel the physicality. Um, I, I mean, Charles is, uh, I, you know, it, it's a science lesson in itself about mitosis. You know, it just has so many aspects to it. But it was his unbridled enthusiasm and support that I will forever be grateful for because he just really believed we could do it and he thought I was a hoot and I thought he was <laughs> marvellous and so the together you know, the only thing is he loathed our dogs because they photobombed all his special photos so his book is full of Dolly our dog but I mean <laughs> uh, other than that I mean, uh, 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 I mean he was just remarkable and this piece is actually the pièce de résistance as you come in you know this sets the tone for the whole landscape you're into somewhere magic Yes, this is this is it. I mean, the thing. I mean, he 
a remarkable man, as you said. I'm sure he came many times. As part of his, his support to you, I'm sure, was by, as they say, turning up, showing up. Um, but there's something about the narrative that each in, in, uh, visitor has to Jupiter Artland, or indeed looking at art wherever they are, which is in landscape, which is that it's, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a performance. It's a, also, it's a procession, but it's also a filmic. You know, one has one, one's own movie camera as one's eyes, as you travel through it and on it and experience it over its time based, which is so absolutely thrilling. Now, the other thing, the next image I want to show is the Joanna Vasconcelos um, <laughs> Commission, which uh, is obviously an aerial view. But tell us about this, because this is another work which is counterintuitive in a way for, yes. for a sculpture park in Scotland. Well, that's a swimming pool. And <laughs> I think, I, 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 and it's a fabulous swimming pool. And Joanna is, I mean, she, the, the work, it's the work behind me. Um, she um, is absolutely tuned into the geomancy of the landscape, which is really basically what most of the artists are picking up one way or another through a, 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 their own personal languages. But this is very much more um, obvious in that she's actually picked up all the ley lines that go through this landscape and mm. marked them out in the pool um, and called it a gateway. And this gateway is in the centre of the swimming pool. You stand and your voice changes. And it's, it's the, um, at, but there is something really quite other about it. You stand and it just starts to get deep. So you're teetering on an edge. You are about to be baptised, but you're not. And it, so it's a phenomenal decorative piece of work. And you know, she does the, there is no end to Joanna's scale. I mean, you know, I think she could have quite happily had it 20 times bigger, but what she does get is this, in, if you pay attention in her work, there is a moment of sublime kind of picking a, 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 a another. You know, she is a very spiritual individual. And so she absolutely, all these motifs, all the, the horoscopes that are in there are extraordinary. She baptised it by singing Adele and then diving into the swimming pool fully clothed. She really was quite remarkable. Um, it was very, it was very um, spectacular, but it's a very beautiful work of art. I mean, it is a, uh, and, to, and a lovely swimming pool, except you're going to run a very strong shoulder from swimming in circles. And you use it, the family use it. Yes, and the public use it. Fantastic. We, have, uh, we let the, I mean, you know, this, is, this, this place is, you know, for the public. I mean, this is mm. the, the whole tenor of Jupiter is that you, we couldn't possibly have just sat going, mm, we've got lovely sculptures. I mean, we had to share them because really, you know, this is an extraordinary thing to see. And the landscape around it of all the, the, the trees um, is uh, wonderful. I mean, it's, it's a whole immersive experience. So once you've seen the Jenks, you know, there is a there is a proper experience that you have here where uh, these artists are dealing with very deep things, but they're provi providing them through this uh, 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 a physicality that is unexpected. Now, I want to move on to um, a very grand piece. And apologies, this is, I know this is not your most no, favorite image of it. We don't like it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> only, be, only because for some reason we couldn't get the one that we did want to show this morning. You know, technology has its own life sometimes. Uh, from a, an artist that we both admire very much, uh, Phila de Barlow, she was one of your teachers. Uh, and I love this piece. It's so counterintuitive because it's resolutely urban in the middle of this glorious uh, landscape. And, um, and it's a shock. Uh, and also, is it the largest commission that you have done? There's something about it, perhaps the, the tallest. Is, or it's it's the very tall. The, yes. It's very, very tall. And it's the very, height of the trees. Um, mm, it is the height of the trees. So these are really kind of um, are, are trees that have been created um, with concrete and almost graffiti. Um, and you come upon them in a glade where, in fact, the other trees, and why I'm not so in love with that photograph is you don't mm -hmm. see that she has really responded in a way that, you know, so many artists find going and working outside frightening, but actually they end up really enjoying the little provocations that nature throws in their way. And this yes. one has and a beautiful dead tree beside it with a great big mushroom. 
and the work is speaking to that. And I think Phyllis just surprised herself that she really wasn't into doing an outdoor, permanent outdoor commission Here we at go. all. I really had to now, chat her up. Oh, there we are. That's better. And that's in the winter, and it's really marvellous in the winter. I mean, it's my, it is, uh, for me personally, this is a great thing. I adore Felida. She yes. is, I, I, I bow at her feet. I think she's one of yes. the, life's wonderful human beings, but so unbelievably talented. And to persuade yeah. her to do something outside that was a proper first huge commission like this, I, I was so chuffed to be able to do this. But also she learned an awful lot. So, you know, yes, I'm sure. you know, actually understanding the challenges of, making something in the snow is it, you know, <laughs> that's not what she's used to but um it, it is it's a very impressive and imposing piece yes well i'm going to recommend your lovely book this very handsome oh, book you. that you you published of 10 years of commission because you know whilst we're so it's so interesting to talk about them today um you know there's so much more to to talk about and to read about and the reason i particularly mention it because philida writes so well about her piece in this book yes. And, um, of course, it's, there's no time to read it out here, but if you buy the book, then you can see it. Sure. Um, then the final, um, the final image I want to show is, of, um, is by, work by Ian mm. Hamilton Finley. You've got three commissions in the Sculpture Park. I, we, I worked with Ian when he was, um, uh, he wasn't leaving Little Sparta. And as you know, on the last year of his life, he did lead Little Sparta. He came, just a brief sort of um, sidestep, a commercial break, so to speak. He came to London to have a look at the Serpentine Galleries Commission, which was part of the renovation of our old building. And he, he ran away. And his gallery, Victoria Miro, literally couldn't find him. And he went boating on the Serpentine Lake, which was just phenomenal. Um, Little Sparta is only 30 miles from you as a cove fries. And also you had from the earliest days a very strong connection to Little Sparta and also to him. So please tell us. Well, I mean, I, I suppose now that we, um, it, 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 I probably shouldn't recommend climbing over walls into people's back gardens to go and see with your lover to go and see some sculpture. But I did find myself in the borders with a boyfriend and we climbed over the back garden and there he was. But And we had the extraordinary experience of seeing Little Sparta by ourselves with him in his house pottering around as he used to do. And he was uh, very generous and said, you know, because he, he was always so supportive of artists, uh, I, you know, go have a look for yourself. You know, let's make this legal. You can just go. <laughs> I acknowledge you're here. And we went and had a look. And I have to say it was one of those seminal moments in one's life mm. where you you realize that you're going to, you know, that this is uh, uh, something that is really other. And I think what is so remarkable about it is where it's near Edinburgh, he drew the the fight, uh, you know, Little Sparta, you named it as a sort of angry, um, uh, you know, forget it, you know, so I'm not going to pay VAT. Um, yes. But I, uh, but it is completely wild. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, uh, it, the, the work w plays with nature and all that um, very intellectual, heavy uh, political work, uh, attention in his uh, work is softened and muted by nature. And I mean, it is a triumph. So if you come to Edinburgh, please find your way, get to Little Sparta. It does have uh, an extraordinary magic. And of course, this piece here, which is the 10th Muse, was a piece that was actually put in after he died, but he had envisaged. And you're meant to see it from the Temple of Apollo, which is um, the, one of his works, where you overlook a sea of hawthorns, and then you see this beauty, this goddess, this yeah. sapphic wonder, and you stand in the temple, which was actually built as a sort of temple of love to mm. um, Pia. Um, and, uh, Pia, his, his, his collaborator. His muse, and, yeah, muse, muse, collaborator. Yes. and and you, uh, you gaze at her, and this is, um, and she is the final work right at the end of the woods, and she is that goddess. She protects the woods. She has a a role that is not only physical but metaphysical as well. Um, she's a, it's a magic piece. I mean, the one of uh, you, the way you describe it, 
the similarity or the connection between Little Sparta and Jupiter Artland is this combination of things which are so personal and discreet and gentle and quiet and careful in a way, and also the epic. So even in that we had to be so rigorous about the five images that we've shown today, but if you could take a beautiful work like this um, by Ian Hamilton Finley, and then the one previously by uh, Thilo de Barlow, you couldn't get two works which are more yeah. extreme. They are completely opposite. And it's also worth saying that, for me at least, um, Ian Hamilton Finney, that was that's very much a kind of characteristic of Little Sparta too. You, have, you come across things which are so tender, so small, so finely, so finely made, both as art by him, but also nature. And then you suddenly find yourselves in this epic landscape and you, it's like, how did I get here? It's as if all, it, I wish all human life could be, be like that. Now, I need to keep an eye on the time, and I've got so many more questions to ask you, so please <laughs> forgive me if, I, Sorry, if now I go at full tilt. Okay. So, um, do you see the sculpture park as providing a public service in the not-for-profit sense? I mean, for example, you have very ambitious education programs, you're passionate about art, for every child in Scotland, and also, what do you think it is about art that is so essential for the human spirit? Well, I, I suppose the Learning Foundation really exemplifies, or sort of, it, it, it carries out what I believe, which is that if you have a moment of inspiration in a child's life, it forms the it, it forms so much of their life's expectations. They and understand what beauty is or uh, inspiration they are liberated they are and i think art provides well i know art provides the opportunity to think for yourself so for here we have we do not interpret the work for people for visitors viewers or for children they discover it themselves we celebrate their thoughts on it and people leave going you know i i, I understand that i take that with me in my heart I think that without art, you are going to have a, it's like turning the volume, the color of the world down. And we need to have the volume up on that, or not the volume, but the saturation up so that people can discover the pathways, their own pathways and their own aesthetics, because we are a world made up of many people's aesthetics. And so the counterpoint of Jupiter, which is exactly what you're saying, is sort of rom there is a romance about it. It's you know, we have long grass, short, you know, we, 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 every detail is thought of, is that it's to capture or to try and inspire, uh, you know, and I mean that in the breath of inspiration into you mm. and it coming out of your eyes, making your eyes shine. My children were rolling around on the floor laughing. But if you have enough moments in your life like that, it starts to join up and it becomes self-confidence. It means that you have your power in your own voice. And that's what I think art can do to you. It can, but it can make you feel very small as well. And we won't mm. let that happen. Mm. That's not for here. Well, you speak, you speak beautifully and, and with such passion and conviction, which means that I know that you're going to be back, going back to the studio very soon. <laughs> but I Thank also you. think about the practical things, because having run an organization, the Serpentine Gallery, for many years, you know, there are all sorts of practical things like money and, you know, staff and logistics. How do you manage the budgets? You know, there are a family concern. And therefore, I imagine the family have a view about the cost of running Jupiter Artland. And like anything, anything which is public, it's always much more expensive when people say, oh, I think I'm opening a gallery. I, I immediately think, oh, my Lord, you know, <laughs> this is going to cost you a lot of money. So how do, yeah. you, how do you contain the artists who come and say, oh, I want it to be three times larger and by very often, I'm sure by its very nature, three times more expensive. How do you do, can fulfill the mantra on budget and on time? Um, I don't or not. You. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think, I think you're the best, best commissioner. Horrified uh, when they came across the spreadsheets over lockdown. Um, but I think that the reality is that we find a way to do I mean, I, I, but the good thing is, if you're an artist, as you know, you, you, the artist is front and foremost. And you, if they've got inspiration to do something extraordinary, you will make sure it happens. And so we make sure that I, I, I really don't, I never, I really avoid that we can't afford it. And that, that isn't because 
uh, conversation because that kills the creativity. We find a way is how we do it. Mm. Let's find out how we can do it. And, you know, let's get this for free. Let's go and beg this of somebody. Let's see how we can get this. Um, so there is a creative process in, in, in making extraordinary sculptures. I mean, in terms of legacy and, you know, whether the family want to carry this on, um, and it, it, they, they, we are working on uh, a way in which Jupiter can become completely self-reliant. And it is to oh, a certain that's extent wonderful. reliant, but we're, we've got a big project that's coming up that means that it can do its own thing. We don't take any public money. That's not our role. Mm -hmm. This is not what we want to do. We want to make mm -hmm. sure that this can carry on beyond ourselves and that it has something that keeps it going. So all I can say is that um, it'll be quite interesting and exciting what's coming next. But um, uh, there, there is, a, I think that has been kind of, been quite, sort of thought about over this lockdown a lot. And um, we, we have a, a role to make sure that we are, we are sensible and not, not, it's not hubris. I don't want hubris. I'm Scottish. I don't <laughs> like hubris. <laughs> I want but it this, to be sensible. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I salute you, really. Um, but if I was coming to you and saying, now, I think I want to open a, a, a sculpture park or I want to commission artists because you can commission artists without having a park. Um, yeah. What would be your do's and don'ts? And are you able to separate, and does it matter if you can't, the, your your home life, because after all, you live in, in the park, Bonington House is, is absolutely probably the very the center, the backbone of the park. And yet you've got all these people around you. How, how do you negotiate all of that to make it work for you? And also, if I was new to it all, what would you say? Well, I, I would say, think very carefully. Are you genuinely wanting to share the work with people or is this something else because actually having the public around you is can be quite annoying um, <laughs> and I, I mean that in the nicest possible way but yeah what I mean yeah. is that you know there's no yesterday two children went missing and you know uh, we oh were God. out and we found them and they weren't uh, uh, they uh, but you know the, these things happen around you because mm. you've got land and you know someone fell in a pond and you know it's oh, uh, that is a lifestyle thing. You know, it, it, you, you, you can't just let other people get on with it because that, it, it is your home. And, and so think it through very carefully. But I think actually, I mean, you know, just collect, support artists. It's the most important thing. If we don't support artists, there will be nothing for culture to pick over, you know, in the future to pick over and understand what's happening in our lives now through art so uh, I say you know support artists in any way you can through artist support badge or you know find be confident in your own taste it's, it's you you know and, and just get on and do it because this is really important for artists that they're supported by people buying their work being interested in it of course and 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 especially now um, yes, it's especially really now. really really important now my last question um, what did you collect before you opened Jupiter Art, Artland? Was it, what, did you have an enormous collection that was hanging on your walls, or did no? No, it really no. this. <laughs> that's no. even better. Well, start big work. and start as you mean to go on. <laughs> I, I mean, I surrounded it myself with my own work, and then I and then we just said, "This is what's happening." I'm Fantastic. Do so I mean, you know, there we are. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much. Thank you for, Thank you. for joining me. Thank you for letting everybody hear the, share with you what you've done. And I urge Thank everybody you. to go to come, um, come to go to it. Jupiter Artland. Yes, absolutely. And I'm extraordinarily grateful. I'm going to now move on just to talk about the other work that we're doing at the gallery at the moment. And I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you again. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Julia. Bye. 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 You, you can now great. watch the previous teas with Julia on our IGTV or YouTube channel. Our gallery in Dover Street reopened this week with an exhibition of selected works from our Art Basel online viewing rooms. Highlights include a new painting by George Bazlitz, a photograph by Sigmar Polka from his important series taken on his travels 
to Afghanistan and Pakistan, a monumental painting of this year by Anselm Kiefer, and a new sculpture by Jack Pearson. In the Marais Gallery in Paris, following the success of Anthony Gormley's exhibition in Habit, on 2nd of July, we shall open a new exhibition of work by uh, Jules de Balancourt entitled There Are More Eyes Than Leaves on the Trees. Dimensions of Reality, Female Minimal is on display at our gallery in Pantin. Daniel Richter's exhibition, So Long Daddy, is currently on view at Gallery to Desro Pack in, in Salzburg until 18 July. Please visit the gallery's website to see the show with immersive 360 degree panoramic views. Next week, um, next Saturday at 11 a.m., I will be having tea with Annabel Seldorf, the principal of Seldorf Architects, a 70-person architectural practice based in New York, founded in 1988. The firm creates public and private spaces that manifest a clear and modern uh, sensibility to enduring impact. The firm's cultural and institutional clients include the Frick Collection, the Museum of Contemporary Art in San Diego, the Neu Gallery in New York, and Luma Arl. Seldorf Auto Architects has also designed Sunset Park Material Recovery Facility, a recycling facility and education center on the Brooklyn waterfront. It is the largest of its kind in the United States. I very much look forward to seeing you all next Saturday at 11 a.m. And thank you again for joining me today. Goodbye. <laughs>